Hello and welcome to another episode of Full Court Finance here at Zacks. I'm your host, Ben Rains, and today we're going to be taking a look at a few stocks to consider buying heading into December with the stock market near or at brand new highs. But before we get into everything, I want to say, remember, if you have any questions or episode suggestions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zacks.com. Also, make sure to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And make sure to check out our new zacks.com slash promo page for a look into some of our services, portfolios, and more. So as I mentioned right at the top, uh, or alluded to at least, that the stock market sitting at brand new highs. All three major U.S. indexes jumped Monday morning with the Dow climbing right back within... Uh, a stone's throw of its recent highs. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ both touched brand new highs Monday morning. In this is on the back of some big moves from some big tech companies with NVIDIA up nearly 5%. Applied Materials and AMD both popped as well. We also saw Tiffany's shares climb over 6% after a big announcement that Moet, Hennessy, Louis Vuitton owner would be buying the company and then we should also note that more of this is coming on the back of uh, news out of China this weekend. The Chinese officials called for uh, more quickly rolling out penalties and punitive damages uh, and action for any infringement on patent and copyrights. And this is coming as the U.S. and President Trump have made it clear that they want assurances from China that there will be follow through on these commitments to do something about intellectual property theft uh, of from U.S. companies in China. And then we should also note that the U.S. wants Beijing to commit to more agricultural purchases as well. And this is all before U.S. negotiators are expected to travel to Beijing for new rounds uh, as they new rounds of talks as they try to meet this so-called phase one trade deal that's been out there for now almost seven weeks or just over six weeks at this point. So on top of that positivity with markets, once again, right back at their new highs, uh, we should note that the market conditions have improved also for stock pickers. This comes after uh, they had been frequently just in general trading together just on the back of more macroeconomic news, such as the U.S.-China trade war. So according to Goldman Sachs, the average three-month rolling correlation among stocks and sectors in the S&P 500 is trending uh, downward throughout November. So among individual stocks, the measure dropped to 0.23 on Friday. This is down from 0.42 on October 30th. So that's below the five-year average of about 0.3 and its lowest level since May. So in general, what you need to know here is that a correlation of one would mean that stocks or sectors are moving perfectly together. A correlation of zero would show no relationship between their movements and minus one would be that they're moving in the exact opposite direction of each other. So right now, it's basically saying that you have a better chance of finding individual stocks that are going to succeed based on their own merits, not just the stock market moving all in one direction, either up or down together. So with this in mind, we're going to take a look at a few stocks that have some solid fundamentals that investors might want to take a look at heading into December, which is still crazy to see with we ha with Thanksgiving coming up later this week. So we're going to start uh, by looking at Intel today, which trades under the ticker INTC, for those of you uh, unfamiliar with their ticker. So Intel is the largest semiconductor maker in the U.S. by revenue, and it has gotten a boost recently through a larger comeback in that chip, pace, chip space that includes NVIDIA and other companies as well. So the company posted impressive Q3 results basically a month ago at this point, and its shares are up 12% since then and more than 23% in the last 12 months, which falls just behind its industry's average, which is up around 27% over the last year. And so the chip giant also raised its full year outlook as part of what looks to be a broader industry-wide comeback that is coming after we had basically a year downturn from some of these more well-known companies. NVIDIA saw four straight periods of declining sales and 
earnings on the back of uh, hard to compare periods, and this is just sort of a the cyclical nature of the semiconductor space in general. So we're we're looking to be out of that uh, heading into what is most companies' fiscal twenty twenties starting on January 1st. So Intel also showed strength in its data center focused business that is projected to play a pretty significant role in the company's future. And this is with the continued expansion of cloud computing in general. So we had CEO Bob Swan kind of talk up their data centric business and that it made up nearly half of their total revenue this past quarter. And he was quoted saying in prepared remarks that, quote, we've been on a multi-year journey to reposition Intel's portfolio to take advantage of the exponential growth of data. So that's going to be a big part of Intel's business going forward is supplying chips that are going to be used in data centers that then power this cloud computing expansion that's really going global as we speak. So looking ahead, our current Zach's estimates call for Intel's Q4 revenue to jump about 3% with Q1 then set to pop about 7.3% on the top line. And then if we just take a look at the full year fiscal 2019, we're expecting slight climbs on the top and bottom lines. And this is amid this larger sort of 2019 downturn for most of these companies with the reason their stock prices are going up is because investors see that comeback coming next year. And then so speaking of that, comeback 2020's adjusted earnings are expected to climb about 2.4% on 1.6% stronger revenues. And we should also note that Intel's positive earnings revision trends help it earn a Zach's rank number two buy right now. And we should note that both fiscal 2019 and 2020's consensus estimates for those full year earnings are up 5% since they reported their results in October. And on top of that, INTC holds an A grade for value and a B for growth in our style score system. And Intel is a part of the semiconductor general industry, which is in the top 19% of our more than 250 Zacks industries at the moment. So we have a situation where Intel is part of a group that is trending heavily in the right direction. And we should also note that Intel pays an annualized dividend of $1.26 per share at the moment for a yield of about 2.2%, which is easily topping the 10-year U.S. Treasury notes 1.8% at the moment. So it pays a solid dividend. It's part of a great industry, and it looks to be headed in the right direction as we head into 2020. And it's growing its business to kind of adapt to the market, which is leaning more and more heavily to that cloud computing business dominated by Amazon and Microsoft and some other big players as well. So moving on from Intel, we're going to take a look at Zendesk Inc., which trades under the ticker ZEN. The company is a software as a service firm. So that SaaS phrase you hear all the time, that buzzword that's focused on customer service and engagement, offering an array of products and services to quote from their company's investor relations page, just to give people a sense of what they do, they say the best customer experiences are built on Zendex. That's pretty generic statement. Uh, it empowers organizations to improve customer engagement and better understand their customers. So basically, they're helping you. If, if you watch a little tutorial video, let's say what they do, they would say that we're helping you better email market or something like that. Just customer service and engagement of engaging your customers in any way in this software as a service cloud cloud space. So the company, you don't need to know too much more than that. They also boast uh, over 150,000 paid customers and they posted stronger than projected top and bottom line results in late October as well. So their Q3 2019 revenues were up a, a whopping 36% and their adjusted earnings came in uh, at 12 cents per share, which is up huge from five cents per share in the year ago period. And it also crushed our estimate. The company currently has a roughly $9 billion market cap with an average trading volume of just over 2 million shares. And they also sport a B grade for growth in our style source system. And they're part of another industry that's sitting in the top 35% of our industries at the moment. And that's the internet software industry. 
and on, uh, as some people might assume, based on some of those figures we've already spoken about, their shares are up 18% since they reported their results on October 29th, and the stock is now up 50% in the past 12 months and 250% in the past three years, which is crushing its industry's average of about 50% over that period. So they're up 250% over the last three years compared to its industry's 50% climb. But more importantly, especially for investors who have not uh, taken a deeper look and maybe want to take a look at buying ZEN shares is that they're sitting at roughly 15% off their 52-week highs at the moment. So it could give the stock some more room to run heading into 2020. And we should note that the San Francisco-based firm's adjusted Q4 earnings are projected to climb 10% on the back of 32% sales growth. And for the full year, we're expecting uh, earnings to climb 41% on 36% revenue growth. And then looking further down the road, this growth doesn't look like it's going to be stopping. So this is definitely a company for the more growth-minded investor. So in fiscal 2020, their sales are projected to climb another nearly 31%. So back-to-back uh, years of over 30% growth we're calling for. And then on the bottom line, we're expecting their earn their adjusted earnings to climb over 90%. So we're calling for 31 cents per share this year in fiscal 2019. And then next year, we're calling for uh, nearly 60 cents per share. So really big top and bottom line growth for this company that's operating in that software as a service model that is really continuing to grow as more and more business transition and digitalize all aspects of their business that they really see fit to, which is pretty much everything going forward. So this is business as big as and small. Uh, so Zendesk is definitely a company to consider. And we should note that they hold a Zach's rank number one strong buy at the moment and an A grade for growth. And as you mentioned, they're they're just set to benefit from the continued digital transformation of businesses, big and small, and governments and every other entity in between going forward. And today we're going to close with a look at probably well, Intel is a very well known company, but we're going to close with the most well known company on our list of three stocks to consider buying uh, heading into December and into 2020. And that's Microsoft, which trades under the ticker MSFT. And we should note that for all the hype in uh, accolades that Microsoft stock has gotten recently, that really under their new CEO, Satya Nadella, I've heard that pronounced differently in different places. So I apologize to Satya if I'm butchering his name. But under CEO, under new CEO, relatively new CEO, I shouldn't say relatively new in case, but in terms of the company's history, he took over in February of 2014, and the stock is really gone on a big run since he took over. So from the very beginning of February 2014, the stock is up over 200% since then. And this came after Microsoft stock moved mostly sideways, Uh, with some obviously volatility and up and down movement in between for the better part of 15 years. So the stock hadn't done much. He took over in early 2014, and they've really gone on a big, big climb since then. And more recently, Microsoft stock is up 50% in 2019, and this has helped it take its place in the $1 trillion market cap club alongside only Apple And the stock is also up 10% since it posted its uh, solid Q1 fiscal 2020 results in late October as well. And as we mentioned with uh, the new CEO who took over in 2014, a big part of Microsoft's resurgence is that it's jumped into this cloud computing business, which we've kind of already touched on at the top. And this expansion has helped it now firmly compete directly against uh, the leader in the space, which is Amazon and their AWS, Amazon Web Services business. So for example, uh, in Q1, the recently reported quarter sales were up 14%, but Intelligent Cloud was up nearly 30%. And 
uh, yeah, just that that expansion into cloud computing has helped drive this, not only the narrative, but actual top and bottom line results for the better part of about five years. And along with their cloud computing business, uh, the Redmond Washington headquarter firm has not has not just let everything else fall to the wayside. So it's continued to innovate within Office and Windows in its devices business, and they continue to make a ton of acquisition, ac acquisitions, uh, acquisitions, I just butchered that word three times in a row, acquisitions uh, such as LinkedIn and GitHub. LinkedIn's really proven to be a big winner for their business over the last several years. So now looking ahead, Microsoft sales are projected to climb 11, 11% in both this year, so fiscal 2020 and 2021. So 11% growth this year and next year is what we're calling for. And then we're also calling for about 12, over 12% 12 bottom line growth for this year and next year as well. So uh, low double digit growth on both the top and bottom line for this company that's been around for seemingly forever, as long as the, the current modern tech era has been in existence. So really impressive growth for a company that's in the trillion dollar market cap club and that we're, we're calling for a continuation of double digit top and bottom line growth. And then Microsoft also consistently tops our quarterly earnings estimates. And it's seen like all the other companies on this list, it's seen its, its earnings estimates trend upward since it reported its results to help it earn a Zach's rank number two buy. And it's also part of an industry that rests in nearly the top 15% of our more than 250 industries. And then along with Intel, Microsoft provides even more growth in Intel and its stock price has gone up hugely, but it also is a dividend payer. So you get the best of both worlds kind of with Microsoft here. So we should also note that Microsoft executives announced in September that they raised their quarterly dividend by 11% and approved a new share repurchase program. The firm is currently paying a dividend that's yielding about 1.4%. So nothing stellar there, but for its really strong growth over the last several years, this 1.4% dividend yield is pretty impressive. And then with its new quarterly payout, that will go up barring if you, yes, they, they're raising their dividend. They raise their dividend every year. So along with all of their growth in the cloud computing space and all of the other things they're doing, which is going to include cloud gaming very soon, uh, Microsoft certainly looks to be a strong tech stock worth considering for just that solid stability and income, along with the, the possibility of some impressive growth as well. So we talked about three companies that look like they're worth considering today for investors to take a look at heading into Thanksgiving and December and really as crazy as it sounds already moving into 2020. So that does it for another episode of Full Court Finance. Until next time, I'm your host, Ben Rains. And remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zax.com. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.